Don't scream. It's not a ghost. Hi. Uh, how does this go? Hey, everybody. So, it's Sparrow. Welcome back to the channel. Or you can call me Courtney. I don't really care. Uh, mm, yeah, I am. California is still closed. I just got that notification. Funzy, funzy, funzy. Um, so I was like, hmm, how do I even start this? It's been a while. Mm. Um, as you can see by the title of the video, this is called the last Hourglass palette I'll ever buy. Um, obviously we all know Hourglass is a luxury brand. I own a couple products from them, including the one that we're going to be talking about today. I own their scattered light, uh, glitter eyeshadows as well. Um, but to shorthand, Hourglass is a luxury brand that's sold in Sephora and now Ulta. Um, that is notoriously known for their complexion products not being able to work on all skin tones, which is, in, in 2020, despite everything else in 2020, that's just unacceptable. It's not, every, if any, if drugstore can do, if every, everyone can do it, let's be realistic, everybody, there we go, with the right amount of effort, anybody can do it. So, a lot of people including actual, like, a lot of people, influencers included, a lot of them are nixing hourglass and their stuff. So I'm going to show you this hourglass palette, and it's the last one I'll ever buy. I wanted to try it because it's the only one that I've seen from their ambient lighting collection that actually came in four shades, and this is the darkest one. This is the ambient lighting palette diffused edit um, in dim, I believe, and this is going to be the darkest one of that lineup. So first, we're going to take a look-see at it. So we have the Ambient Lighting Powder, Ambient Lighting Blush, and Ambient Lighting Bronzer. And you're supposed to use it, you know, to lighten and sculpt your face. Personally, in my opinion, I feel like we should just... I need a brush. All right. In my opinion, I think that we should just kind of give up on Hourglass. And I, a lot of people agree. We're going to start, go ahead and start with the bronzer. I have no, I only have foundation on and concealer. I have on no blush, bronzer, and cream product for that at all. So I'm going to start by dipping into the bronzer, which is nice and silky feeling, and just start sweeping it on my cheekbone, kind of bringing it towards the center of my face. Um, 20 minutes of rewiring things later, I can finally film. Um, so I'm just going to take the bronzer and just kind of sweep it on areas where I usually like a little bit more warmth and color. And I'm only doing this side of my face just so you guys can see the difference. Ignore my messy hair. It's just not working out today. All right, so I see a slight, let me use a bigger mirror. So I do see a little bit of definition. It's not too dark of a shade and mixed with that ambient lighting powder, I didn't get like this really overblown amount of bronzer but being that this is the darkest palette from the lineup and it's gently bronzing me not even too dark or kind of muddy or that's a little that's that's why this will probably this will be the last hourglass palette I ever buy these retail for $64 I bought mine from Ulta to get points and also because I wanted to give it one last shot I was like it looked dark on the website <sighs> anyway I'm not gonna harp I'm not gonna harp on it Using the same suspicious brush, I'm going to go ahead and do blush now, the center shade. I'm just going to dip in and I like to kind of drape my blush. So I'm just going to start at the cheekbone, bring it down a little, and then bring it up towards the temple just to give me that like flushed look, like a model-esque kind of flush look. The blush is pretty. It's very faint in color, which is surprising since it's very like more pigment in the pan. I was expecting it to just be a lot more color pigment. I am getting a flush from it, but I wouldn't say that like I am who, oh my God, blushing. These look very natural though. So if you like a uh, powder product that is very natural and very smooth and very like not illuminating, but it's going to give the skin a really natural finish. The last one is going to be the uh, ambient, ambient lighting powder. So the ambient lighting powder is Diffuse Light, Euphoric, Fusion, and Luminous Bronze Light, which is their darkest bronzer. So we're going to try the ambient lighting powder. 
So first I'm going to try swiping it on like as if it was a highlight because I'm not really sure sometimes. And I will say I don't think it's a highlighter. Not getting any... If it was to give me a glow, I would say it doesn't. So it's probably, this is a diffuse like finishing powder, which means you can kind of like swipe it over areas I already have powder to brighten or uh, add like a little bit of, you know, eh, too. There's sometimes there's parts of your face that it needs like a little bit of that natural glowiness um, to help bring it to life. Personally, I don't really need that anymore because I don't set my foundation anymore. But, you know. All right, so face is completed. I'm gonna where I need a highlight. I actually need a highlighter. Uh, highlighter, highlighter. <sighs> da, 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 da. I'm picking. Kind of wanted. Cause I don't have a high hourglass highlighters. Uh, I don't want to really take away from the product. Uh, I don't know. What else is up over that? I'm just going to pop on this Bobbi Brown Moon Glow Highlighter really quick just for a nice little glow on the side of the face to kind of tie it all together a little better. Without any kind of glow product, I feel like this side of the face kind of was a little flat. So, this side of the face has no product and this side of the face does. Um, Looking at it, I definitely see the bronzer. I definitely see blush like I see the products they're very 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 light though not they're not giving me a nasty gray tone they're not giving me an obvious like uh you shouldn't have that on look but for $64 this is the, for $64 to look this natural it's like the it's exactly what high-end always has been high-end makeup is thinner sheer formulas um, or powderier formulas that you can kind of create and craft, you know, the look you're looking for because you're not trying to look like you're wearing makeup usually in high-end formulas. You're trying to look like you're naturally ethereal or naturally radiant, which this makeup gives you that look. Hourglass makeup has always been to me like more naturally pretty kind of looks where they're kind of more like highlighting, you know, your skin, like giving you a glow to your skin, you know, a little touch of powder you can add and bring your face to life. And that's what this did. Um, especially if you set your face, this is a really good product because it's going to give you all your definition and the powders aren't really matte. So they're going to really keep your face nice and defined while also, you know, giving you the glow of natural silky skin you can also get this by doing cream products which uh do you have time to do it on the other side i don't know that phone number um which you can obviously do with cream products um you know layering them carefully on your skin and everything cream products are for everybody i do admit that uh can't fault you guys for you know feeling that way uh i just think that for 64 dollars you know this is why this is the last hourglass pilot i'll ever buy it is uh expensive with very low pigment um it feels like you spend a lot of money on nothing um and for the average current makeup consumers this is pricey for something that you could probably get at the drugstore to me this is about like it, it has like the like I my history with hourglass is that like it was some of the first brand and the first high-end brand I really invested a bunch of money into um I you know even tried to say oh yeah you know with the with the products that they have that are not pigmented enough you know all you have to do I'm gonna do the other side of my face watch off all you have to do is just uh get the Sephora employee to open the product and get ones with more pigment and less of the ambient lighting powder so I would buy ones that look like this blush and not ones that look like the bronzer so you could get as much pigment as possible i think i really kind of when i the moment i really stopped wanting to buy stuff from the brand was actually when they released the bronzers because i was super excited and i go to the bronzers and they're oh they're the you know the marbling 
you know, the marbling's so pretty. And then I realized, like, yo, this marbling, I touch it, and it gives me this ashy streak. I'll swatch it. When I swatch it for you at the very, very end, you're going to see that the it doesn't give you the, uh, the effect of, oh, I uh, have bronzer from the swatch. It gives you the, what is this ashy powder I'm about to put on my face? I'm going to put a little bit of bronzer on the sides of my nose just to kind of redefine it. And I kind of put too much concealer on earlier, so it might have, you know, lost it. So, damn. Um, and I just felt like, wow, like, you know, it kind of sucks that, you know, it, I waited, you know, I was super excited for this product for it to feel like, dang, I don't feel catered to. As well as I was usually the second to last shade from the end of the range. Frequently, I'm going to add a little bit more blush on this side. Um, and so, you know, that, that doesn't make you feel very valued as a customer. It makes you feel like I'm an afterthought. I'm the edge of their range. Why am I on the edge of their range? You know, like why, why do I feel like I'm a, and you know, you're not an afterthought as a human being, you as a person are not an afterthought. You were designed the way you were designed inherently. And anyone who says otherwise is probably a chode. I'm going to go ahead and add the Bobbi Brown Moon Glow just for some highlight because I like a little bit of glow. And the Bobbi Brown Glows are very soft and sheeny without giving you that sweaty look. Can you even put it in your there? Just add some light to the high points of my face. All right, boom. We're complete. And now my face actually is complete. Um, So, you know, I had all the, bl I had all the blushes. I had... Um, all palettes. I drove to a Saks Fifth Avenue twice to get their new when their eyeshadow palettes had launched to get the ones that before they were you know like individual pants. It was like a bunch of pa of colors pressed together next to each other. So if you swept the cream shadow this way, uh, the cream color shadow this way, you could mix it in with another one. There was like little lines. Um, so I have a history with Hourglass. So there's a teeny bit of sentiment attached to this product. So now we're gonna swatch it. Okay, on the back of my hand, with no primer or the foundation, this is the dim, um, why is the title one more time? Ambient Lighting Powder and Diffuse Edit. This is dim. This doesn't look like it should bronze me. This looks like it should be chalky. But like I said, the sheerness of the products kind of overlaps the... I feel like my blush is not even, but I can't see very well today. I guess I'm going to hit this. Um, but you see, it, it's $64 for something that's going to make you look like ethereally pretty. But you could spend that money on products you honestly would like better. If you like super glitzy highlights, there's a lot of brands that do super glitzy highlights. Um, this one's more of those pull it together at the end kind of things. Um, I personally think that, you know, it's not for everybody. This is my last palette. I'm not going to buy anything else from this brand. Um, I think I haven't been tempted by anything from them since. I was kind of interested in the At Night collection, which was their darker skin toned theme collection. But again, At Night didn't show up in this lineup at all. Like the dim, you would think At Night would be the rosy red color for it. But I think that if they, if they, hopefully they start moving away from the marbling as well as expanding their shade ranges for their like three foundations, they really could bring it around and, you know, regain the black dollar. They, cause they're not gonna get it right now. It's just, that's just my honest thoughts. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video, this little diatribe about uh, Hourglass and the last palette I'll ever buy from them. I'm obviously keeping it, but I appreciate all of your time and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.